everyone loves using a microscope. You get to see things that are invisible to the unaided human eye. But if you don't know what you're doing, these tools can be a little frustrating. You may wind up just seeing a blur or nothing at all. Don't worry, give me a few minutes and I'm gonna make you a pro at using the microscope. Let's start out with the name, microscope. Micro means small, scope means an instrument for seeing. It's a tool for seeing really small stuff. So what are the basic parts of the microscope? Let's start at the top and work our way to the bottom. First of all, you have the ocular or eyepiece. This is attached to the body tube. And then we have the nose piece, which is this rotating part of the instrument that has the three objective lenses attached to it. The objective lenses each provide a different level of magnification. The shortest objective lens has a magnification of four. The medium has a magnification of 10, and the largest has a magnification of 40. The objective lenses look down through the hole in the stage. The stage is where you place your specimen on a slide which goes underneath the stage clips. The stage clips can be manipulated by pressing the back of them like this. Now, through the hole in the stage, a light will shine. Obviously, this comes from the lamp. If you wish to have a different brightness of light, you will adjust the diaphragm. The diaphragm is this circular disc which spins like so. And as you spin it, it selects a different size hole to allow the light to shine through. These knobs are the coarse and fine adjustment knobs. When using the lowest magnification objective lens, you will use the coarse adjustment knob to get your specimen in focus. Once you have it in focus and you switch to your medium or highest objective lens, you will then use the fine adjustment knob to bring the specimen into focus. The bottom of the microscope is called the base, and this part here is called the arm. If you're ever asked to carry a microscope, you put one hand around the arm and you put the other hand under the base. Just like so. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Now you can look at slides that have already been prepared for you or you can make your own. Today I'm going to be making my own because I want to take a look at something that's pretty cool the actual human cheek cells from the inside of your mouth. In order to see my human cheek cells, I'm going to need a slide. This is the rectangular piece of glass. And I'm also going to need a cover slip. This is the small, very thin, square piece of glass. Be careful with these because they are glass and they are fragile and will break. I'm also going to need some methylene blue. You see the human cheek cells are kind of transparent and dyeing them blue will make them easier to see. I'll need a pipette to apply a few drops of the methylene blue to the middle of the slide. Next, I'll need to get the sample of human cheek cells from the inside of my own mouth. I do this by gently rubbing the end of the toothpick against the inside of my cheek. Now, I will transfer those cells into the methylene blue dye by rolling the end of the toothpick in the dye. 
The next step is to place the cover slip on top of the specimen. Now your goal is to avoid getting air bubbles in the specimen as much as possible. So, the best approach is to take the cover slip and angle it. Start it on one end and slowly lower it down. Again, the goal is to avoid having air bubbles. It's time to place my specimen under the objective lens. Make sure that the smallest objective lens is directly over the hole in the stage. Press the back of the stage clips and situate your slide so your specimen is over the hole in the stage. Now this next step requires patience. Slowly turn the large knob, the course adjustment knob, until something comes into focus. It just takes time. You have to turn the knob slowly and you have to watch carefully. And something's coming into focus. And there I have it! A very small image of what I believe to be very likely some mouth cells. Now it's helpful to know what you're looking for. I know that the human cell has a nucleus and is often round in shape. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take a hold of the slide and carefully move it on the stage until I place what I think is the best sample right at the tip of the pointer. You see, if it's not at the tip of the pointer, when I zoom in with the next objective lens, I might lose it. Now I'm ready to turn the nose piece to the next level of magnification. And this is important, folks. Don't use the course adjustment knob anymore. Doing so with the higher level of magnification can actually crush the glass by forcing the larger objective lenses down into the glass. So, using only the fine adjustment knob, bring your image into clear focus. Now it's time to go to the highest level of magnification. Once again, my fine focus knob is used and my image Comes very clear. What a beautiful sample I have of a human cheek cell, generally roundish in shape and with a nucleus. So there you have it. You're a microscope pro. It's always fascinating to find out what ordinary things look like when viewed through a microscope. Have a blast exploring the micro world and as always, stay curious my friends.